when you first started jamming again, when you joined Behold the Monolith, did you come with a set plan of what you were going to incorporate, especially knowing where they were emotionally and creatively? Set plan? No, it was just kind of organic. By the just way, you have the best fucking last name. Some degree. Is that your <laughs> it is. I don't live up to it at all, I, my, which my wife appreciates, you know. Um, but uh, no, no, it's good. It's all good. Um, no, it was organic, you know, when, when I came in and, I mean, I wasn't trying to change anything necessarily. I actually was a fan of the band, you know, so I had yeah, seen yeah. them before. I would drive down to Orange County and see them play Fullerton. I think Slide Bar was the last show they played here in L.A., and we were at that show. And, um, if anything, I try and channel Kevin to some degree. You know, what would wow, Kevin really? do? Really? Well, I, I, we come from two different styles. He's, very, he's a very lemmy, straightforward, super fast, heavy picker, real aggro. Uh -huh. um, I'm coming, you know, Sasquatch is more straight ahead rock and roll, um, straight up. So it was sort of a challenge for me to, to pick up the tunes. and But it, it was fun. It was different. You know, it was like apples and oranges. And uh, I wanted to, to learn everything as he would have done it or, you know, to the best of my abilities to some degree. And then moving forward, too, you know, when we go into the studio, a lot of the stuff I still, the stuff that he had written, I wanted to keep Kevin wow. still. To some degree, you know, oh, yeah. I add my little things in here and there, but for the most part, you know, a lot of the, the, the riffs and the bass riffs are, are Kevin's, you know, the middle of Mithridatist. Is that the right one? Yeah. The, the bra bass drum breakdown, that's all, you know, that's Kevin's riff, and I wanted to stay true to that, I guess, to some degree. So... It, it, I, I love the dude. He's he's a great bass player. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's an interesting thing to to go through what you've what you've all gone through, and then to be able to which is what we're going to get to next, the next evolution. I think the energy of the band is fucking incredible. Uh, Architects of the Void is a fantastic record. When is that coming out? Uh, September 29th. This record's very angry, man. Very dark, <laughs> righteously so. When you wrote this, or when you were in the process of writing it, was this your purging of what you had gone through? In hindsight, yeah. I'm not usually one of those. Uh, I actually usually make fun of those people that are all like, you know, it was a cathartic. You know, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of. I like to play guitar, but this record, in hindsight, was. You know, it was, yeah. it was all those things. It was. Uh, uh, it was, and, and, and it wasn't until hindsight, you know, I knew it was going to be a dark record, and you get Billy Anderson involved, and, you know, it's going to be a darker record. Yeah, he's, 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 uh, pra he's practically the fifth member. <laughs> practically, yeah. And, uh, and uh, but in hindsight, I was like, there was a bit of uh, that, you know, it was a bit of a release to get it done, and, and, and seeing the finished product, it felt, in a strange way, it feels good, but yeah, yeah I, I guess it is dark. Uh, 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 my friend from that writes for Terrorizer said the same thing. You know, it's like a really dark, angry record. And I didn't get the angry part, but it, but you know, I guess there was some anger in there. You know, we lost our friend, and you, yeah. get, you get mad about that shit. Yeah. You know, vocally, I'm also very impressed. Did you find yourself in a position where, even though I know you weren't going to try to mimic the vocal uh, octave as Kevin, but how did you try not to go so far off where fans like myself would be like, oh? Well, I started talking to these guys about, like, wh who were some of Kevin's favorite vocalists, you know? Like, what was Kevin going for, you know? Like, who did he look up to? And listening to a lot of that stuff and trying to get a feel for, like, what he aspired to do. And I've spent the last, I mean, I'm a vocal teacher and, um, and been singing in bands for years. And so I, like, spent a lot of time you know, trying to do a lot of different things. So I was like, well, if I can do what he wanted to do on this record, then I might as well. So... Who wrote lyrically this album? Talk to me about that because in my discussions, I was aware, I don't know if I should mention it, but of the understory that Kevin had in his imagination. That's another difficult thing to go through. Definitely. I've never written with someone else's um, ideas in mind without sitting down with that person and writing with them. Um, so being told, like, this is what this person wanted to write this album about roughly kind of roundabout and kind of winging it from there it was um you know i had to get creative with it um especially because i never had the pleasure of meeting him um so it was 
it was kind of just a trek. He had come up with a couple song titles, so I kind of dug into the meanings of the words and, and you know, just did some digging on, on stuff and talked to these guys about, you know, what they would want to write an album about and things like that, and I just got creative with it. And a lot of times, I mean, in the rehearsal room and some of the early shows, it was just sounds, syllables, not so much words. And then a lot of the, the process was kind of turning those into words and stories. And then I had words that got plugged in in the studio. And yeah, it was just a, a, a mixed mash of different ideas and writing styles. So, in, in a sense, this is the example of real musicians coming together and writing and especially uh, separating real life and musically going in a direction to keep the spirit alive so to speak when does this album come out uh september 29th what label will it be on? it'll be on uh our own label <laughs> it'll be on behold There's nothing wrong with that man uh, dude, dude it's great to be on your own label. We're, we're still no no we're still going with the uh the Ar arctic uh, forest moniker that was Ke well, me and kevin were putting it it's it's, it's us we're self-released so until somebody steps up with a decent recording budget I will <laughs> keep it up you know I, I so. think DIY is the best <laughs> Billy Anderson we mentioned him before don't ask me if you don't know look him up fucking guru he worked with you guys again yes. how, how was what was his input into nurturing you all in the studio well he was uh because he did a fucking great job on yeah this. no he you know what he came in a lot because the last couple records you know being I've known Billy for years and yeah, he's the fifth member and 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 I think he liked us, likes us, but you know, he, that's what he does for a living. But this is the first time working with him, even before going into, he wanted to do this record. And he was, he had a vested interest in doing it too. And uh, uh, so he just came in and d I just told him, I want this to be a Billy Anderson production, nice. you know, and I just. Could never go wrong with that. You do your fucking thing, and I want to. And he intuitively knew it was going to go in a dark direction and stuff. And he added some stuff like, like, uh, a lot of the music was already written when we got Jordan, and uh, so there were parts that was like, there were more riff, riffs were the vocals, you know, the riff was the centerpiece, and he had us like extend them so the vocal could have a thing and like let the riff shine and then let the vocal shine. So we, we changed a little bit up when we got in there, but mostly it was just him cultivating a vibe. And when things would get tense, and they got tense a couple times because he had some technical difficulties and this and that. He knew how and when to lighten the mood and, and when to push us and when to, you know, <laughs> poke fun at us or when to, you know, Steve you know, it, you know, yeah, you know, we just got along really well. Billy. Yeah. At the end of the day, he did everything right for making this record what it is. So what I really like about this album, aside from just the, the energy and the fact that it still retains the foundation of Behold the Monolith, I can't stop listening to it. It's track by track. You have to listen to the whole thing. It's not skip and go. Um, again, especially in a generation where attention span, I think it's a great record. September 29th? September 29th. I want to commend both of you gentlemen. Uh, not, only did, not only have you guys uh, did a fantastic job coming into a situation to help the healing process, but being great human beings as well, to be able to come in as not musicians, especially in LA, but as comrades. And both of you, I've given you my praise before. I think you're both great, and it's great to see both of you, with the addition of the two new members, evolve to a whole other better place. And as we all know, Kevin, they know, a, a gone. He's soaring right now. He's the eternal, he's the eternal monolith. So behold the monolith, architects of the void, September 29th. Get it. Thank you.